agenda of uh, today's uh, session. Today, we're going to present uh, data flow template concepts, what they are, an example use case that demonstrates template benefits, technical highlights of uh, some of the solutions that we built, and how to get started contributing open, uh, contributing your own uh, templates to open source uh, Apache Beam and Dataflow templates repository. Uh, we will have some time for Q&A at the end as well. As a way of introduction, Aqualon is a, a custom software engineering company, Google Cloud Partner, headquartered in Seattle, Washington, with engineering offices in Europe and North America. My name is Alex Kasalapov. I'm program manager with Aqualon, and together with Artur Hanin and Ilya Kozarev, we focus on data, analytics, and machine learning solutions. Our team contributed several Apache Beam complete examples and data flow templates based on Google Cloud customers' use cases and some other smaller enhancements along the way. What is a Beam pipeline? Pipeline is a flow of operations in Beam. In the simplest way, it starts with an IO read transform, then a series of data transforms are applied, and finally, IO write transform writes data into an output sync. Users can run pipeline from their development environment. They need Apache Beam SDK and uh, the SDK stages files in Google Cloud Storage creates job request file and submits, uh, submits a request to Dataflow service. Dataflow templates is a way to package and stage pipelines that is easy to share on your project and in your organization and does not require setting up Apache Beam development environment to create data flow jobs. Templates have two phases. Construction phase is about implementing the pipeline, compiling it into execution graph and staging on Google Cloud. Execution phase allows to run templates to uh, run them using Google Cloud Console, G Cloud, or REST API without the development environment and associated dependencies. Runtime parameters allow customizing the execution of the pipeline. Running pipeline does not require to recompile code every time. There are two template types. Uh, classic templates are staged as permanently fixed execution graphs on Google Cloud Storage. Classic templates require modifying Beam pipeline code to implement value provider interface in order to defer reading of variables when the template is run. For example, if you want to have a parameter with name of PubSub subscription, uh, would need to implement this through value provider interface. A minor change in option, uh, for example, switching to GCS instead of PubSub, would require recompiling the template. Also, I.O. connectors need to support value provider interface in order to support these template parameters. Flex templates package existing pipeline and all dependencies as a Docker image on your project's container registry and create template specification file that is pushed to GCS bucket. To execute Flex template, you can select template spec file and refer to that spec file. Based on our experience, Flex template provide more benefits and easier to use than classic. Benefits of Flex templates are dynamic execution graphs that are constructed and validated at the launch time when user specified final parameters. For example, template can, Flex template can support PubSub and GCS as input sources, and uh, it will construct pipeline uh, execution graph based on the parameter that user supplied, whether it's PubSub or GCS. Flex templates also eliminated need for value provider interface, and that improved developer experience. Creating Flex template has three steps, implementing the actual pipeline and business logic, creating metadata, and building the template. 
we will dive into all of the steps in our presentation and in demo. But to start, we will introduce a use case that demonstrates value and benefits of Flex templates. In, in this scenario, customer use case was to ingest large volumes of data that included sensitive data like credit card numbers and PII. A third party data protection service was used for data tokenization, that is converting raw data into non-sensitive representation that can be safely stored. Based on access role, a user might see this token representation of data, uh, a user might see a partially masked uh, data like last four digits of credit card number or an original data, original credit card number. Dataflow provides an autoscaling fully managed cloud service to run pipelines and uh, provides consumption-based pricing that was perfect fit for data processing. Challenge was that out of the box, uh, there was no support to call third-party service to tokenize data. We built custom pipeline to implement this, implement uh, integration with a third-party service for data tokenization. And this custom data pipeline needed to support different data formats, different input sources and output sinks. Actual data processing pipeline remained the same. Templatizing pipeline allowed to implement pipeline just once and support all required IO options, all required execution options using the template parameters. Next, Arthur will guide us through the architecture and technical highlights of this solution. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Yeah, just let me share my screen and we're ready to rock and roll. All right. <clears throat> so my name is Arthur and as you already know, I will guide you through the overview of the whole architecture and then I will highlight the most interesting parts of our solution. And we'll start with the overview of the architecture. As you can see at the slide, the pipeline supports different sources and sinks. It can take JSON, CSVs or Avros from GCS and stream data from PubSub. Then it tokenizes data via remote REST calls to the third party data security service. You can see that this service interacts itself with the policy storage. And finally, the pipeline outputs tokenized data into one of the supported sinks. These sinks are Cloud Bigtable, BigQuery, and GCS. During the development, we face two main challenges, which you can see marked with three orange arrows on the slide. The first challenge was about supporting several input sources and output sinks. On the diagram, you can see it on the left and the right side from the data flow template block. The second challenge was supporting and optimizing performance for calls to third-party REST service. This one can be seen a bit higher than the data flow template block. We're going to take a look at the, at the challenge I've just mentioned and see what these stateful Dufan words in our diagram means. And we will start from the concept of this mysterious stateful Dufan, even though there is no much mystery. Its name is nicely self-explanatory. All right, let's begin diving into this. A brief explanation for the DoFun may sound like this. DoFun performs the particular transformations over each element. What kind of transformations? The ones that you told it to apply. A stateful DoFun expectedly means that our DoFun has a state. Thus, it has the ability to access persistent mutable state while processing each input element. Very important to mention that a state cell in beam is scoped to a key plus window pair. Let's take a look at the diagram a bit closely. At the first glance, it may seem that every input element which is presented via red squares goes into the state on the right, which is illustrated via red triangles. But it's not the only case. You may have such, and we even will take a look at one shortly, but it's not necessary. These red triangles can be anything that you wanna save at the particular processing step. So as you might guess, we should somehow use these triangles to produce red circles to call our Dufan truly stateful. Here are some examples where this concept becomes handy. The first one that comes to my mind is deduplication. We wanna keep a Boolean value to distinguish if we saw the particular key before or not. Another example is arbitrary but consistent index assignment. 
Here we want to keep an index in memory and increment it for each data element. The last example I'd like to come up with is anomaly detection using some machine learning models. For example, we can keep machine learning model and its last prediction for the particular user and then use it to make further predictions. Now let's move to our case where each element goes into the persistent state and after some period of time comes out. Well, this picture removes all suspense. Yes, we use the persistent state as a buffer for our elements. The challenge was to optimize the communication with REST service. On this diagram, the REST service is illustrated via elegant gray cloud on the right. Stateful Dufan helped us to buffer and budge data into bundles that worker can send in one request. We even managed to maintain ordering of data between these batches. Well, the time has come to see the implementation of Stateful Dufan. This code snippet is based on the BIM documentation for Stateful Processing. I can't help but say that the BIM documentation is very helpful for both starting with BIM and going deep down into use cases, technical blocks, or designs. And I'm thankful to BIM community for providing these resources. I'd like to highlight the important parts of this Dufan, starting with states that are specified here. You can see two of them at the very top of the snippet, buffer and count. Both of them have a type of state spec. Buffer, as you may see, is a back state, so we have some back with events. We actually add events into this bug. Count is a value of integer that we increment in order to optimally keep track of the amount of the elements inside of the bag. In this code snippet, we can also see how we update our states. At the beginning, we increment count and add current element to buffer. Then, when count becomes greater than some defined threshold, we process all elements from the buffer and finally clear both states. We didn't stop on pure stateful to fun. We also added a timer to it. We came up to the situation with a streaming data when the actual data may appear after some significant period of time. We didn't want the external service to idle. And that's how we added the flexibility. Now, there is no matter the pipeline is streaming one or batch, such construction handles both situations. An initial stateful Dufan can be quite simply extended with a timer. The declaration is almost the same. As you can see, it uses predefined timer specifications. Then we set the timer somewhere at the process function, in our case, at the very beginning. And the final step is to add actions that will be performed after the timer expiration. It can be done via a function with a non-timer annotation as the last one on this slide. This code snippet plus the previous one are actually everything what is needed to implement data batching. In fact, if you need to implement any custom stateful processing, stateful Dufan is definitely purpose for this. However, if your case is similar with ours and you're just looking for the data batching, there is another alternative, and it is called group into batches. I'd like to share with you insights we gained during our own researches. When our team was at the very beginning of the development process, we found stateful to found concept. And after some diving into it, we were amazed of how easily we can solve our challenge with batching. We implemented our solution, created a PR, and then our reviewer gave us a hint and suggested to consider group into batches. We took a look at it and found out what it is. First, group into batches, well, surprisingly groups your data into batches, the same way a stateful Dufan has a state. Behind this transform lays stateful Dufan, and the actual implementation has a lot in common with code snippets we saw a few slides ago. It is optimized in different ways. There is a data prefetching that speeds up data loading, and data flow runner knows how to treat this particular transform to parallelize processing via auto sharding. Finally, group into batches is supported in both Java and Python Apache Beam SDKs. You can see this nice Python example with fruits and vegetables on the right side of the slide. No more circles and triangles. Notice that even if some key doesn't have enough data to form a full pack of fruits, group into batches doesn't forget about them, outputting as much as it can. Next, we will see how we enhanced our template with this. This code snippet presents a P transform that takes a P collection of key integer and value row pairs as input and outputs P collection tuple. Please notice that we use some row class to represent our data. Now let's take a bit closer look at applying of group into batches transform. 
Firstly, we specify the size of the batch to pass it to a backstate heat on behind. Secondly, we provide a maximum duration for buffering, which is actually passed to the timer we talked about pretty recently. And finally, we apply our tokenization function that takes every batch, sends it to the remote service, and then parses a response into a collection of successfully processed elements and a collection of the ones that fails for some reason. Well, that's it. Now we can batch and beam everything we want. Can we replace every stateful Dufan with group into batches? Well, at least not yet. There are still many situations when stateful Dufan comes more handy than group into batches. To sum up, stateful Dufan is a great and flexible way to customize any stateful and timely processing. Group into batches is a nicely optimized out of the box transform that saves your development time and covers every batching buffering case. That is why the duplication and arbitrary but consistent indexing should be implemented with pure stateful processing because they don't require any batches. On the other hand, external API calls and data preparation for machine learning models are natural candidates to use batching and optimize it via out of the box solution. Remember another challenge I talked about? Yes, the one that refers to many input sources and output syncs. There was a reason why we noted row class on the previous code snippet. I wanna pass the word to my colleague and a good friend of mine, Ilya, who will walk you through our architecture design to address this challenge. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Arthur. And hi, Bing community. Let me share my screen. Yep. So, uh, as we mentioned before, one of the biggest challenge uh, what we had during the template implementation was data representation. At start of development, we planned to support multiple data sources and data things for our pipeline. And what is more important for us, we wanted to be able to scale to new sources with the minimum implementation time. To achieve this goal, we needed a common abstraction for data representation. As you know, in BIM, we have ASMP collection, but the type of element in this collection must meet our requirements. Let's think about requirements for data representation format. First, what came in my mind, it should be a common abstraction, which we would use with different input formats. It will help us to make our main business logic in pipeline independent of input format. Second, we want to make uh, the transformation to this common abstraction easier to develop. We want to have a common pattern or interface to implement new transforms and it will be great to have already implemented transforms to this format included in BIM SDK. And last important thing, what we need to keep in mind, it's serialization. We want to have a balanced abstraction, what will be comfortable to use agent code and effective for serialization. Because as we know, in data processing and big data world, each extra kilobytes for elements can be potentially turned to hundreds and hundreds extra gigabytes for all data sets. So let's take a look at the common approaches for data representation. In general, all existing uh, common solutions we can split into two categories. First, text-based solutions. Uh, it's formats like XML, JSON, CSVs, and so on. What's easy to, in, uh, to understand formats and we can use it easily using different libraries uh, like JSON for JSONs, but there is a common issue. This format, uh, for this format, serialization, because in general, it's string representation format with not very effective serialization process. The second group, binary based formats like Aura, Protobuf, Parquet, and Message Park. In this group, we can highlight Aura and Parquet as the more popular for data processing. Aura is row-oriented indexed format what's optimized for Java serialization, and Parquet is column-oriented format. It's a good and common choice when we talk about big data process, but for BIM usage perspective, in case when we don't want to use generic records, we need to implement additional classes in our code to represent data as a Java object. It's absolutely fine for some cases when we have strong data structure and when we don't plan to process any different structures in the same pipeline. But in our case, 
we plan to uh, create a really flexible template what could process different data formats and structures. In this case, we need to use something more generic and flexible instead of our. And we found Beam Row. Beam Row fully covered our requirements. Beam Row is part of Beam Schema API and consequently it supports primitives in Beam Row, uh, in Beam Row Schema. This often match primitives types in most programming language like uh, integers, long strings, and so on. Also, what important for us, ordering in the schema will be the same as ordering in data. What about serialization? A row coder is quite effective for serialization. And yes, someone for, from you might say what hour is more effective for serialization process. Yes, that's true. But benefits of row make it more preferable for us in BIM. Using utilities included in BIM SDK, we can parse BIM schema from JSON format. And it makes BIM, uh, BIM roles a very generic solution for us. Also, BIM role supports BIM SQL. It's very prospective feature in BIM, but provides us with Zeta SQL syntax to make SQL queries to row based key collections. It might improve analytics in BIM and reduce Java or Python knowledge to implement BIM pipelines. How Beam Row solved our challenge with multiple sources and sync. We made architecture with Beam Row in center and implement whole business logic in our pipeline around the Beam Row. To support multiple uh, sources and syncs, we use simple function to transform source format to Beam Row and from Beam Row to the destination format. And to, to be able to scale to new syncs or sources we have a common pattern to implement new transforms uh, from and to beam row. For the first look, implementation of these transforms into beam row and from beam row might seem too hard. However, it's not. What else is great about beam row? There are a lot of implemented transforms what uh, what already included in beam SDK. So. Let's take a look how you can use Beam Row in your pipeline. And yes, it's time for live demo. Here is the demo plan. Firstly, I want to I want to make template implementation overview. I'll demonstrate to you uh, how you can organize pipeline code structure. Together, we will implement a new source in our pipeline. It will be parquet format, and we will use parquet IO from Beam SDK. We will transform. Uh, we will implement transformation from parquet format to beam row. And at the end, I'll show you uh, how you can easily build a data flow template from pipeline and use it in Google Cloud Platform environment. Let's switch to IDE. Firstly, I want to introduce you, introduce you in data flow templates repository. First, we implemented uh, our functionality to work with Beam schemas, parsing schemas from JSON files, and reading uh, multiple formats from Google Cloud Platform uh, into Beam Row in our template package. However, when we submitted the template to review, our reviewer noticed what uh, this approach is quite good idea to su uh, and suggest us to share this functionality to existing common package and extend this package in data flow templates server. Uh, so let's briefly, uh, let me briefly review data flow templates repo and common package. In data flow templates, you, you could find uh, a lot of useful uh, templates for data flow and you, uh, you can find common package what uh, can be helpful for implement new templates with uh, a lot of useful transformations, uh, existing options for uh, common uh, common approaches for templates. For example, if you're planning to use BigQuery or Bigtable, you can uh, enhance uh, your options class from uh, existing class and common package. Uh, this package contains uh, I/O transforms, for example, Google Cloud Storage I/O. It's our uh, our contribution in this package and contains uh, formats that uh, we can read from Google Cloud Storage. Also, coders, uh, utils, for example, 
to work with beam schemas and beam rows. So, uh, and uh, some constants. How you can organize your pipeline and template? Uh, we uh, implement our template uh, using separate packages uh, in our Java code. And let's go briefly for each of uh, those packages. First, it's option. Uh, this package contains all logic uh, what creates with pipeline options and parameters, input arguments. Templates package contains a main class of template uh, with pipeline creation and uh, any constants that we used in pipeline. Transforms contains uh, our beam transforms, for example, to uh, work with external uh, REST service to recognize data and IO transforms to um, implement custom logic for some uh, input output source. Utils just utils uh, contains class, uh, an AMP class, uh, what uh, stored uh, our supported formats that we can uh, read from Google Cloud Storage and tokenization schema utils class for work with schemas. Uh, let's take a look to main class of our template. That's very uh, similar, cla similar class with uh, a lot of others beam pipelines. It's just a uh, class with uh, run method for certain pipeline results. We uh, create, we create here pipeline object and apply necessary transformations. I want to highlight here a few important points. First, we uh, parsed beam schema from JSON using beam schema utils from common package in data flow templates repository. Uh, beam schema can be represented with uh, JSON format, with simple JSON, uh, with uh, array of fields in schema. And for each field, uh, you need to specify name, type, it's requires object, uh, types comparable with beam types, uh, and one optional field, uh, nullable. It might be true or false for nullable and not nullable fields. So uh, this template supports uh, pops up as an input source and Google Cloud Storage too as an input source. In this demo, we will focus on Google Cloud Storage and together we will implement new format as you may see, uh, in, as you may see, this switch case goes through the uh, supported formats from Google Cloud Storage, and we will add new format partner. To work with input formats, we used Google Cloud Storage I.O. from common package. It's built reader uh, with passing options of our pipeline, contains necessary parameters like input path for data, and beam schema is a parsed schema and created a beam schema option. So, uh, and for this reader, we can uh, call uh, ne uh, necessary format, for example, CSV, JSON, and our. To implement new format, we need to extend Google Cloud Storage I.O. And let's do it. This class implements builder a pattern and after value. That's uh, very interesting to discussion, uh, very interesting topics for discussion, but uh, we have limited time for our demo. And in this demo, let's focus to implement new IO transforms for parquet format. So uh, I already uh, prepared just a body for this class. It's uh, P transform, uh, this class extends P transform, uh, what takes P begin as an input parameter. We plan to implement starting point for our application, our beam pipeline, and uh, this transform should return P collection of row. So let's think how we can read parquets from uh, any file system, including uh, Google Cloud Storage. We can use uh, Parquet IO from Beam SDK. To use it, we need to apply uh, 
parquet IO input uh, IO transform to our pbegin input apply. Let's name it to make our code more clear. Uh, yeah. And pass uh, parquet IO read method what requires skin. However, it's actually not being skin. It's our skin because parquet IO implements with our skin. Uh, to transform BIM schema to our schema, we can use our utils, uh, what also contains in uh, BIM SDK. And it contains to our schema method, and it requires BIM schema as an argument. That means schema. So, also, we need to call from method uh, to this builder. Uh, yep, and pass in this method file pattern to read parquets. Let's take it from input argument for pipeline. Get input file pattern. Yes. So in general, to read parquets, let's all let's check what types return us this IO. Let's p collection of genetic characters, but we need p collection of rows uh, to convert one type to different type in BIM. Uh, one of the easiest way we can use map elements into this specifying necessary type of description and serialization function what converts uh, our destination format to other form, our, our source format to destination format. Sorry. And let's use it. Apply to our parquet records. Uh, let's also name it. Um, to roles and call map uh, map elements into this passing type descriptor of row class of course because we need rows as an output and uh, we need to specify function what converts uh, generic records to beam rows and we also can use our utils because our utils uh, from beam sdk contains a required function the yeah, generic records to row function it's very useful we just need to pass beam schema to this method. So, and last thing, what we need to do when we convert one type to different type in beam, we need to specify quarter. In our case, it will be a uh, role quarter. And for the role quarter, uh, we also need to specify beam schema. So, I think that's all. And we're ready to use this new method uh, in our template. Let's switch back and add new case statement that will go through the parquet value. And uh, let's apply an asset transformation to pipeline object. Pipeline, apply our reader and call parquet. It's wrapper what calls our new class. Uh, right. So if you want to uh, want to find this template and uh, this implementation of Google Cloud Storage, you can uh, go to the Dataflow templates repository and to common package and find it. Uh, yes. I think that's all, and uh, we're ready to start building our template. Uh, but firstly, I want to show you one more useful feature of data flow templates. For data flow template, you can specify metadata file. It's just simple JSON, but contains metadata uh, for your uh, 
uh, template, its name of template, description, and the list of parameters. For each parameters, you could specify a name, label, help text for user, param type, it could be primitives like text or for integers or numerics. Uh, is optional flag uh, for optional and required parameters and regular expressions. Regular expressions is uh, your own uh, your own additional validations for uh, parameters. And if you don't want to change anything in your code, you just can add a regular expression and metadata before building a template. Let's add new format to uh, parameter that uh, uh, contains input format. Target and go to help text. So let's build our template. To build template, you need to do a few things. First, you need to package your Java code with all dependencies to single jar file. For example, using Maven or uh, Maven or, or, or Grid, as you wish. Uh, also, you need to call Google Cloud command line util with data flow, flex template, build flags, and pass necessary parameters. Uh, before we will go through the each parameters, let's start with uh, script uh, because it uh, uh, requires some time to building and yes script is starting and uh, let's go for the each parameter template path just a path for json file what will be generated uh, with google cloud command line util it path to google cloud storage and uh, this json will contains uh, metadata of your template image gcl path it path in Google Cloud registry uh, where Google Cloud command line util will push your Docker image for your template because we use Flex template, it will be Docker image. SDK language uh, can be Java or Python. Flex template base image. Uh, you can build your own image based on Google provided uh, images or use uh, some shortcuts like Java 8, Java 11 or Python. Metadata file, just a metadata, what I showed you before. Jar file, it's uh, our jar, jar file with all dependencies, but we built using Maven. Environment variable with uh, link to main class. I think that's all. Let's take a look on our build script. Yes, Docker container is building. And while it's building, let me show you how you can run your template. Looking ahead, uh, there are a few ways to run template. First, you could use uh, Google Cloud uh, command line util to run template from console. Uh, also, you could use uh, REST API call to uh, Google Cloud. And third one is Google Cloud web console. Uh, looks like our template is built. And uh, let's run it using command line tool. Uh, there are uh, list of parameters and we will discuss it later when I show you uh, Google Cloud Console, Web Console. And right now, uh, let's just run it. And yes, job is run. And while it provides resources for data flow, let's go to Console and take a look how we can run our template using Web Console. So, uh, for this demo, I prepared small parquet file and schema similar to this one what I showed before. And to run Dataflow drop, you need to go to Dataflow service. As you may see, our job what we run uh, what we run using uh, command line is still running. Good, it's providing provisioning resources. Uh, we need to click create a job from template. And here, very useful web interface. Just need to choose custom template. Uh, choose Google Cloud Storage Path. Uh, this one, it's JSON. 
and data flow automatically takes all parameters for your template and generate fields in web browser. Uh, you just need to specify necessary parameters. To save our time, I uh, already passed necessary parameters. It's uh, parquet schema in JSON format, uh, Google Cloud uh, storage file pattern for input formats. It supports wildcards. Uh, I want to read parquet uh, from the specific directory. And input format, uh, let me demonstrate how our regular expression validation works. Just uh, type wrong name and, and uh, show our, uh, us uh, error. Uh, we need to specify URI to tokenization service, byte size for our stateful processing, output direct directory, and uh, format for output files. So uh, I think we're ready to run new job. And let's table to our previous one. Yes, data flow uh, requires some time to process uh, resources and our previous one is running. We might see execution graph with uh, few steps. Uh, first one is our own implemented uh, it parquet uh, in Google Cloud Storage I.O. Second one is uh, tokenization uh, using third party service using open two batches. And last one is write. Uh, also, you're using Google Cloud Storage I.O. Right, sees. So, I think that's all for demo, and let's go back to the presentation. Recapping the demo, we took a look at the approach how to organize template code structure. We saw what is the metadata and how you can describe template parameters and, and uh, add validations using regular expressions. We discussed uh, schemas and mentioned it as an approach, how it can be represented in JSON format. Uh, we implemented region functionality from parquet files, and we've uh, figured out how to implement transformation from parquet into beam rows. And we build and run template in Google Cloud Platform. It was really easy. To find this template and search for more use, case, use cases, you can take a look to GitHub repository. There are a lot of implemented Google provided and community templates that can be helpful. To share your own template with community, you might contribute them to the data flow templates repo. It's easy to get started with contribution. Fork the repository to develop your template, develop pipeline following the style guides and best practices, sign contribution license agreement, submit pull request to merge. Uh, it will go through the code review to get merged into repository. So let's summarize our session. We discussed data flow templates, difference between pipeline and template and how flex template package pipelines into containers for easier sharing and training. We went through an example user scenario for data flow templates and how to implement a scalable architecture for interacting with third party REST service using Beam. We dive deep into stateful processing, use cases and recommendation for stateful define and group into batches. We learned how BeamRow can be used for data representation and demonstrated benefits of Beam Schema API and draw as a common abstraction. Finally, we look at, at how to get started contributing templates to open source community. Thank you for joining us in the data flow template session. We are happy to answer any of your questions.